So here we are in northwest Wales on February the 13th and it's a fairly warm winter's evening actually and very little wind. There's a few insects around so we might see some bats. It's about um, six o'clock now, I haven't seen any yet but I've um, got the classifier up and running anyway and it's already detected my keys. Look, has keys. You can rattle these keys in front of the microphone there and um, get some uh, test readings. So if we look here, we should be able to see on the other side there. Look, should be able to see house keys if I can focus it, which I can't. I won't focus anyway. So here we are, I've got the classifiers working, but we haven't seen any bats yet, so there's no bats to pick up. We might see the odd pipistrelle if we're very lucky. Sometimes see them. It's been quite sort of wet and windy the last few days, so if they were feeling a bit peckish, then they might come out this evening for a, a little bit of a feed. Most of them will be hibernating, of course, this time of year, but we do still see the odd intrepid bat. So let's see what happens. It's getting dark now, so visibility's decreasing. But this is the optimum time for, for them to come out at this time of year. So keep my eyes peeled, see what we get. Okay, I just saw something fly past. I don't know what it was. It was I thought it was a bird, but looking at the screen here, it's telling me it's um common pipistrelle, so there's something going on. Let me see if I can see it. Problem is it's so dark now that uh, I can't see hardly anything and what I thought was a big bird might have been a bat right up close. But what we can do is to look at the results of the bat detector classification later on in the comfort of our own homes because it records anything that it thinks is a likely candidate of a bat for a future analysis on a software such as Audacity. And we can look at the spectrograms and make a um, positive confirmation that the bat detector did indeed detect a common pipistrelle, which it uh, says it did, and I trust it, but uh, it's good to check anyway. If we look at the screen here, we just seem to have detected another common pipistrelle, but like I said, it's so dark, I, can, I, can't, I can't see anything. It's just pitch dark, you know, but I probably out there somewhere. Might just get lucky and one flies in front of the camera. Yeah, it's good to look at the skyline as well. It's They're there, look, there's another one. I just saw it, I just saw a bat. There's definitely a bat out there. So, uh, again, looking at the screen, you should see something pop up in a minute. It takes about 30 seconds. So, what we're looking at, oh, there it is, yep, there's a bat I saw. That is a common pipistrelle. It's showing 50 audio events, so I should get some really nice um, recordings there, and we'll be able to analyse them really, really nicely. Uh, this is really good. I really did not expect to see anything this evening, but like I said before, it is quite warm. It's, I reckon it's about six or seven degrees, which is really good for this time of year. And very, very confident that we've got a result.
I'm going to head back to civilization now, but before I go, just a quick check on what we've seen so far. So the light blue bars are my house keys or other general rattly things like snapping twigs and me shuffling about. Uh, but uh, most importantly, there's the um, the tall purple bars. There's uh, about eight of them there. Those are representing common pipistrelle bats and other than that there's a few false positives so one just popped up as we we're recording uh, in red it's telling us it's a nattery bat but it's not uh, no it's telling us it's not tula bat it's not uh, you can tell that it's not because of the uh, very low um, audio count and um, there's a couple of black blobs which um, seem to indicate that it's nattery bats. Again, those are false positives, but very, very low um, audio events, so not really a problem. If there were 50 of them, we might um, think that there was a uh, another species, uh, but there's not. So I would say on the conclusion that we've seen one bat swooping around, feeding on insects, a common pipistrelle. But we'll go back now and look at it in uh, a more civilised environment. So now that we're somewhere warm and dry, we can look at our results in a bit more detail. So all the files uh, here represent classifications that were done by the software. And uh, I've clicked the modified uh, tab at the top so you can arrange them in order of percentage um, probability. So at the bottom we've got low percentage probability so we don't want to really want to look at those at all. Uh, but if we work our way up we should start to see our common pivotals. And here we are, we've got one at a 101% um, probability that that is a common pivotal. So that one should be good. But um, obviously I've already looked at these and uh, this one's the best one actually. So if we open this one in Audacity, let's have a look. So we've got a few markers here of amplitude, but the best thing to do is to look at a spectrogram. And here we go. So on the bottom of the spectrogram we've got like uh, background noises, bird noises, which are audible to human beings. And up here, this is the interesting part, we have common pipistrelle calls. So let's zoom in on these. Here they are. They're at about 47k, I should think, maximum amplitude. And if we zoom in a bit more, we'll actually see the shape of the calls in more detail. And look at that. Fantastic. Uh, classic hockey stick formation here. And the maximum frequency is at, like I said, about 47k. You can zoom in on that a little bit. There we go, 47k is undoubtedly a common pipistrelle bat. And just for reference, this part of the call is what the bat emits from its mouth or nose. And this part of the call is the information that is reflected from the environment. And that is the audio detail that the bat uses to navigate in its environment. Uh, we can't actually see much detail there but um, if we were able to get that in higher res resolution for example we would see lots of information that the bat uses to swoop around at high speed and avoid collision with branches and such like but most importantly to be able to detect its prey. Uh, which comprises insects such as um, crane flies and moths and such like. So there we go. We have successfully demonstrated the intelligent bat detector.